Welcome to Impact Wrestling. Now, before I get started, I want to say that I believe I will be doing a video after this, or it's going to come out tomorrow. It will be about Big Show and AEW. It will be about Bobby Lashley winning the WWE title, and it will be about the rumors of NXT now moving to Tuesday night. I'm not going to add it in this video. It should be its own separate videos. Maybe it's... I, I've always thought of changing the name of what... Um, um, a debate of the week. Maybe it should be a little bite of wrestling or something. Tell me if you like the name. But here is what we got for this next video, which we should be coming after this or tomorrow. Now, what we get in this show? A good amount of content before sacrifice. Now, that's coming on the 13th, I believe. Is it the 13th? I believe it is the 13th. 13th of this month, we will have sacrifice. Now, are they building to it? Yeah. Is it great build? So-so. Uh, but doesn't mean it won't still be a good Impact Plus show. The last one we got wasn't bad at all. So this one with a possible better than average build. Because it is still so-so to me personally. Other people may think it's actually a good to a great build. I'm looking at it on a very even perspective. So I see it as it is. It is a okay to maybe somewhere in between okay to good. It is not great. It is not spectacular. It is just good to okay. That's just me. So what do we get here? We got a triple threat for the X Division. That's the first one. Black Tyru versus a Ace Austin versus a the great Vanessa, or as I call him, the smooth criminal of a Chris Bay. Now, here's the thing. Guys, I'm... I wasn't surprised that Ace Austin won. I'm being honest here. It was a good match. Black Tyru looked good. He did. He actually looked better than both Chris as well as Ace. Not because he's a better wrestler. His presentation, because he's so new, gives him a bit of an edge. He's something new. He's something fresh. Particularly in a division that has so few people in it. Look. We have almost nobody in the X Division. We have very little going on in the tag division. And when it comes to the world title, you have very little there as well. We just don't have the right writing that's going to entice the people to come in. Because remember, guys, this is what a lot of wrestling fans, including some of the people who write in my comments, don't understand. It's not about getting enough people. The writing must be good. Because remember, we're not the only ones who watch it. Regular fans, we got... Indie wrestlers who are watching Impact Wrestling. We got former AE, well, not AEW. There are some people at AEW that probably worked in Dark that are from the Independents that have been watching not just MW, um, M, um, MLW. I don't know why I boxed Major League Wrestling. <laughs> MLW, Impact Wrestling, RH, even NWA, which is doing nothing right now. If you go to their YouTube channel, they haven't uploaded anything in months. People are watching Impact that are wrestlers as well. And they're not going to want to go to a company where literally there's no writing. Remember, they may get some good money, but there are wrestlers that like to know they're going to be utilized. So if the writing sucks, who's going to want to go? Tell me if I'm wrong. Leave a comment below. If you're a wrestler, there are two things to look for. One, money. And two, if you're going to be utilized on the show and be seen. Because unlike the WWE, they'll just throw you in the back and throw you in catering. This company doesn't generally do it all the time. Either you're going to be seen or you're not going to be seen. They're going to care about that. Now, Ace won, which I wasn't surprised. And now he'll be going up against TJP. At least until the Swinger Palace segment. And you got Ace walking the Swingers. TJP who is doing the bets on everything, and then the Chris Bay, who is angry that it was, remember, the only reason Ace won was because of Madman Fulton interfering. So now they're going to have a match probably next week. I'm going to say this. It wasn't a bad segment at Swears Palace, and it wasn't a bad match when it came to the triple threat. To be honest, I think I would have rather seen Black Tyru win. Now, of course, he's new in the company, some people want to say that's not fair because you got people that have been there for a while. But let's be honest, it's the same people. You have very few people. They need something new. That's just me. Tell me how you feel. Now, 
Caleb, well, Caleb did get involved in the match between Havoc and Tennille Dashwood. The reason Tennille won was because, well, let me put it to you like this. I thought the story might be, might be, because of Havoc, not having a Tanea by her side, you may start having a feud between the two because honestly, they didn't do much with them in the tag division other than throw them around, a, uh, put them around a circle. Let, let's be honest. You had two women in the tag division for Impact Wrestling and there's nothing there. Yes, Jordan Grace and Jazz are getting a shot, but it would have been better to just split them off, let them feud, and then not let just Jordan Grace and Jazz go, but maybe you got Suzanne, Susan and a Kimberly. Move them away from it, throw those two at it, at least it'll be a fresher match and they could try to build a story around it without Dana Perrazzo involved. But that didn't happen here. We did not have Havea basically getting pissed off at a, 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 they hugged after it was over. Yes, Caleb interfered. You got Tina winning. And then you got Havoc being saved by Havea. And now they're together again. I just, what, what's the point, guys? Look, I know Havea is a great wrestler. I see Havoc as a great wrestler. And to be honest, if you wanted to change it up in the women's division, the knockouts division, which historically, Remember, historically, the knockouts have delivered better quality matches and better storylines than WWE did before they did NXT. Let's be honest. This is the truth. You got more going on with the beautiful people than you had with anything that was showing on there other than Mickey James going against Trish Stratus or having, well, I love me Victoria. Victoria was always good. But you get my point. You got more here than you would have at WWE. And now look what you got. You got nothing for the women. Nothing. Nothing. You don't have enough women to do anything. Shuffling around is barely even working. So seeing this, I would have wanted to see Havea go up against a Havoc. Not because both of them are great. One of them is better as a heel than the other. But it's because we got nothing else. We need to try something new. It's, it's boring. So that's what we got. We had... Hmm, maybe I should say something about Twitch. Twitch didn't look good today. Last week it was in the 6,000s. Now it's in the four to 5,000. It's dropped a bit. Interest in Twitch has dropped a bit. That's not a good thing. Now it doesn't mean Impact Plus isn't going, doing good and Fightful. No, not what is the app? What is the other app they have? Fight app. Along with the Impact Plus app, you can still see Impact Wrestling. So... The question is going to be, are they getting good traffic there or not? And this is not about international, guys. This is about national. Remember, national. They got plenty of international. You want national exposure, not international exposure only. But it's just me. Now, when we had Tony Khan with Tony Schiavone, this is something that was getting me interested because... What I'm going to be talking about in my other video is kind of stemming from this because I had to think about it after I saw um, just Alex's video about NXT possibly moving to Tuesday night. Now, this kind of added to what I'm going to be talking to. So this is the brief thing I'm talking about. That's it. So I hope you watch for that. Now, we had hmm, violence by design. You see Diener. In front of EY, Eric pretty much telling him, you said, if you lose, there are consequences. You said you accept them. Then you lost. Then you wanted to get back at him again and you tried a tables match and you lost again. You know this has to happen. If you do not, you will fall back into that disease, that cancer of what made you what you were. And he said, I understand. Walks into a room with Dorling and gets his ass whoop. And then he crawls out and you see it in my face. He's still on the floor and Eli got his hand in his neck. He said, this is for your own good. And he says, I know. Not in so many words, thank you, but he says, I know. And they leave him alone in the room with the door closed. 
after he collapses back on the floor again. Now, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. Wouldn't it have been better, for me personally, it would have been better if there had been a stipulation in that tables match where if one of them lost, they had to pay a price. When it came to Jake, he would have to join Violence by Design. If it came to Diener, he would have to leave Violence by Design for one day and be with Jake. That would have made it more interesting, particularly that you could have Eric Young and Dorling come at them and attack. And then either this could lead into realizing a face turn eventually for Diener or basically Jake being knocked out for a couple of months because they just wiped him and leave Jake off TV as they try to progress violence by design. I think that would have been better for them. Now, maybe they will go there, but I just don't see it here. Now, the match that really didn't really mean much. It really didn't. But then it does at the same time. Finn Juice and the Good Brothers versus Triple XL and Reno Scum. Let's be honest here. Triple XL and Reno Scum were nothing but pretty much a prop. Because this was about the rivalry between Finn Juice and the Good Bros. This, this is all it's about. Because one set were the elders and the other ones were the underlings. And they basically had to learn from these guys. And now they want to be recognized they're here. But these guys want to put them back down here. That's what this is all about. Now the match itself was okay. And in the end... They almost lost, but it was a magic killer to the face of a thorn, thorn stove by a, um, and who did the pin? I think it was Carl who did the pin. But basically they started arguing in the back afterwards and they just wanted to be respected and they're not getting it. But for some reason, they now have a match at Sacrifice for the Impact titles, which Finn Juice is more than happy. They manipulated them into it. But let's be honest here. Do you actually believe this manipulation was good? Look. You had Finn Juice go up against Reno Scum only. They didn't go up against Triple HL. They didn't go up against Reno Scum a second time. You. This is why this sucks. Because they have no tag teams. There should be more tag teams. What happened to Storm and what happened to Saban? Couldn't they have gone up against them also when it comes to Finn Juice? Finn Juice has three teams. They went up against one. Then they teamed up with another team to face the same ones again. And then they win and now there's an argument. And now, supposedly, this is what you get. And I just find it very lackluster. I'm sorry. If Finn Juice had gone through Reno Scum, Triple XL, Storm, and Saban, then they did this tag team, it would make sense because they beat everybody. But this isn't about if they beat everybody. This is just about a rivalry about a, the students who are learning from the more senior members of a dojo back in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And the problem here is set up. I just... If they're trying to book just like in New Japan Pro Wrestling, fine. For from, for, it angers me. I'm sorry. You got a new tag team in. And you could be doing something interesting with them. Like making sure they get built properly. Go through whatever tag teams you have. Go through Reno Scum. Go through Triple XL. Go through the Storm and save it. And do something with them. If they're not unable to appear on the tapings. If they can, they should have gone through them all. And then did this tag match. And then with maybe a couple extra segments... That's when they have the match. And it just feel like it was done so poorly. I care about a good story, guys. I'm sorry. This ain't a good story. Sorry about the noise. They're like spinning out in my area. They usually do drag racing in my area. Believe it or not, the area I live in, the Bronx, they love the drag race about, what, 2 in the morning? Either use motorcycles or cars. Maybe about 5 blocks away. That's just me. Anyway, I just think it could have been better. Now... Um, here's something that needed to happen. And it's kind of old school. You got Brian Myers versus Eddie Edwards with Matt Cardona as the ref. Now, before the match happened, Matt and Brian were together. And 
Brian is trying to kiss a little bit of ass of Matt because they just did their podcast and he's saying, you see how great we are? You don't need to be doing this, but Matt's saying, I can't, I can't cheat, man. I'm sorry. I can't. I got to do it square. You know me. And he thought he could get away when he can't. And then we get the match. The match was okay. Matt Cardona did it down the center, just doing the same type of count, the same type of breakups, the same type, generally speaking, which wasn't bad. I, I was all right with it. Then we got Brian Myers, and I believe I got the shot, and it's in my face. I hope I do. Of uh, Brian taking something out of his trunks, jamming it into his arm, into his pad in his arm, and then do this, knocks him out. But then you see 100% that Matt does not let it happen. He stops it, and Eddie wins. You can see them on my face where they were talking before. When uh, Matt was trying to tell Brian, no, I'm not going to cheat. This has to be done. Look, this is a bit old school. Now, I'm sure some people will not like it. Some people will like it. It's due to the fact at least they are building into a rivalry. Because you got one guy who was there earlier, another guy who's his best friend who does a podcast with him, comes in, he feels threatened because he knows his friend can't easily outstrip what he's done so far because he probably thinks he hasn't gone far enough. And now they slowly progress going from here's best friends to going down, 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 and then they become enemies. Now, this would be considered a slow burn. And admittedly, for me personally, I understand it. It's not 100% bad. As long as they don't try to have the match at Sacrifice, but they do have the match at the next pay-per-view, which I believe is going to be in April, then I could say, okay, at least they built it to a certain extent. If they rush this, I will not agree with it. But I will say this, at least they are doing it. Instead of just jumping straight into it, at least they are trying to descend these guys into a possible feud, which it's obvious going to be there. And they are using Eddie Edwards as a catalyst like they use Hernandez. That's just me. And admittedly, I'm not happy about that. Eddie should be doing something else. I'm sorry. Now, um, what else do we have left? We had the Rich Swan and the Moose vid packs. Rich Swan was okay. But this was more about Moose. When it comes to Moose, guys, here's a great thing and here's a bad thing and here's where it gets scary. Great thing. Moose has developed a lot in the last, what, three years. Easily. Not before even doing the Hitman thing. He had progressed a bit going from here to here to here. He has progressed a good amount. Doesn't mean it was great progression, but it was progression. So I will say that's great to see. What is bad? Here's the thing. Due to the fact what happened with Tessa, a lot of things were put in the back burner, and I do believe Moose would have been a champion ahead of time, before the pandemic, before Tessa left. He would have probably been a champion if they had not done the angle with Tessa and, and Sammy and her becoming teen, I'm about to say TNA, Impact World Champion. I think they would have gone with him, but they decided to try the women route Instead of the women route where she is an underdog or the women's route where she's like China. They tried to just make it all about being a woman. That's what it came down to. And Moose got the back burner. So now we got Moose here. His championship, a TNA world title, either permanently or temporarily, which I think it is, temporarily has been reactivated as a world title. Now, I don't know if he'll merge them. There's a good possibility he might. That might actually be a wise thing to merge the old TNA title and the Impact title into a new title with a new new name. Not saying to rename Impact Wrestling, but at least it would be something. Just what I'm thinking. But here's the scary thing. We hope that Kenny Omega is going to take the Impact title and make it into something. By having it on AEW Dynamite. And it worries me. It scares me that this is not going to happen. Now, I know there's going to be some of my subscribers say, it's a slow burn. Just relax. Wait. No. No. I'm sorry. For me personally, no. 
because we've been through this for over two and a half to three years. Counting on the old regime, going into the new regime, which has been over two years now, into what we got now. And there has not been a great change. Yes, Kenny Omega made a huge impact on Impact Wrestling. But since then, what did we get? Have we gotten something new between the crossover between AEW and Impact Wrestling? No. We had the Good Brothers. We had Private Party and Matt, Matt Hardy. And that's generally it with a couple of scenes of Kenny Omega. Other than maybe once going in the ring there. We have seen not much progression. And that is what worries me, guys. It worries me. It scares me that this might not happen. I hope it does. But this is my point of view. Now, we get the triple threat, which is closing of the show. Of, I, I don't know why Deanna Peraza was in the match. Honestly, I don't think she should have been in the match. Really. It makes some sense. Because of what happened at the end of, after the match with ODB and she getting taken out. But really, I just don't know why they even went there. Particularly with so few women. This is the thing that I wrote down that I thought of with this match. Good match, but one big problem. You know what it is? The same women. All the women that's in the division other than Havea, other than Havoc, to Neil Dashwood. And when it comes to, um, who else do we have? We have um, um, Rosemary as well. All the women that are in the division was at ringside. That is it. This is all the women that you see generally from Impact Wrestling. If they got more women that work on Explosion, they need to bring them up. Because this is a serious problem. If you already have women on Explosion, why are they not on the show? That's if they do. Who knows? The match itself was okay. Kira Hogan wasn't bad. They did make it very clear about the LGTQIA+. I believe that's what it's called now. They actually added in the last six months an extra IA+. Which I think, guys, come on. Look. I gotta say this. I know I, I'm, I'm going off topic. I gotta say this. I honestly gotta say this because it's kind of sickening because of... What happened on Twitch? Since I am watching this on Twitch. And what stupid comment they did on their Twitter. Look. Do I have respect for people like that? Yeah. I'm no gay and lesbian. Cool. There are gay and, le gay and lesbians that in wrestling. Kira Hogan is one of them. She's gay. No problem. But when you emphasize so badly what 100% people just want one thing. One. And this is what people tend to forget. In wrestling, in politics, in movies, in everything. They want you to, to be something extraordinary. And people like that just want to be ordinary. Ordinary people that just have this preference. Have this thought, their feeling, their soul. And when it comes down to hearing this on Impact Wrestling, it sucks. I had to say it, and I'm going to leave it at that. Now, the match ends, and it wasn't bad. Jordan Grace, I, who was it got pinned? I think it was Jordan Grace. No, it was Kira Hogan got pinned by Deanna Perrazzo. She's all proud, but then ODB wipes her out. Now we're going to have that with ODB. And that's sad because that's all we got. And I say this again, it's not about how many women we got. We can have a ton of women if they don't have anything to write for them. Now, the final thing. Is he coming? Or somebody... No, somebody new. We had the Sammy segment. And he goes to the training area where a Miguel... Basic... Well, Trey Miguel. He goes to a training area. He is recognized in that training area from... His work in Impact Wrestling originally with the Rascals. And you see a Sammy Callahan going there. Rubbing it in that, oh, this is where Trey Miguel started. Oh, look at his boys right here in the wall. And I believe I got a shot at that. I don't think I'll put it in my face. But he's saying, how quick did they forget about him? When it comes down to it, he's nothing. He goes in. 
He looks at the guy who runs the place. I don't recognize him. You guys tell me who the guy is below. I don't recognize him. Walking with a cane. And he said, pretty much, you actually trained this guy. You want to know why he's such a quitter? It's because of you. And then he tells Sammy, look, he ain't no quitter. When the time comes and you face him, you're going to find it out. Particularly that you already feel it because he, he's rented rooms in your head. It's $5.99 and he's got all of the apartments in there right now. And Sammy proceeds to whoop the ass of everybody. But then some new guy comes in. Supposed to be a new student. He's in my face. I believe I got, shot, got that shot. If I don't, I'm sorry. And he sees something in this guy. I believe he's called Sam. And he says, look, calm down. Hold up. Why don't you come walk, talk with me? Walk with me. This ain't for you. Let me talk and walk with you. And then they leave. And you see him in the camera like, I got myself a new bitch. What does this mean for Impact Wrestling? I don't know. I don't recognize the guy. But it does not mean this guy doesn't mean something. You guys can tell me who he is. But when it comes down to it, we've been needing more people, but, and I say this clearly, as much as more than a few people say, you got to be patient, this is a slow burn, new people are coming in, it makes no difference how many people come in that come from AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, AAA, or even WWE when it comes to NXT. If they cannot write for them, ergo, if there are more women on Impact Wrestling and they're an explosion, why are they on Explosion instead of on to the main part of Impact where they need more women to show that they have a division for the Knockouts and the Knockouts tag title? Why don't they show them? If they don't have the women, that might be due to the fact not just because there are no women available because they always got someone on Dark. No. This is about people watching the product. And next to them, not really giving them big money. And let's be honest, Impact Wrestling got good money, but they're not going to give the big money of AEW and WWE. But if they notice that the writing sucks as they look at the product, why would they go? Yes, it's important to have new people on the show. Now, if they got people in the back, why don't they show them? Well, maybe it's because they have nothing to write for them yet, which is a bad thing. If the writers can't do their job, the people don't want to bring them out, that's bad. If the writers can't do their job, the people who are outside Impact Wrestling, why would they want to join? Because if they can see they can't write, then why did they go? Yeah, they can get some money, but then if they sit in the back and they get pissed off, it's no better than WWE. It's just my point of view. Peace.